Let's, before you're seated, before you're seated, let's, okay. Wow. Woo. I was sharing with him. I've done this privately and publicly, so it's not like uh, pulpit polity and some sort of rhetoric that you engage in for the purpose of enticing the audience. It's done with authenticity of spirit. And I've said this, and I'm going to say it every time I'm here. No other pastor on the planet influenced Samuel Rodriguez like Dr. Pastor Rod Parsley. Now, I'm going to do this one more time. I need us to honor not just any pastor, one of God's greatest all-time generals. Help me honor Pastor Rod Parsley. He's part of my pastoral oversight board, so he's my pastor, and I love him dearly. I'm so honored here to be with you. Listen, I'm cognizant to the fact this is the bottom of the ninth inning, two outs. So, yeah, I mean, every single session impartation, this is the last one. I get that. So the Mariano Rivera anointing is here. All the Yankee fans, all the non-Yankee fans are going, what is that? Here it is, five of them. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to give you what the Holy Spirit gave me. Before... Before you, because hay, un, hay una unción muy particular aquí esta noche para el servicio en este lugar. So yo voy a compartir lo que Dios ha puesto en mi corazón en esta misma hora. So, real quick, be, before you're seated, mm, mm, but I want you to find the person you like the most. And, and just tell that person, there is an anointing born out of adversity that empowers you to change your world. Tell your other neighbor, the one that you barely tolerate, tell that neighbor, there is, there is an anointing born out of adversity that empowers you to change your world. And before you're seated, tell one more person, by the time you get home, by the time you get home, what you've been praying for, what you've been hoping for, what you've been fighting for, what you've been fasting for, what you've been through hell for, you are about to occupy all of God's promises in... Somebody prays like you actually believe. I said you're about to occupy all of God's... Let's expedite the process here. Acts chapter 28, real quick. Bien rápido, wham bam, thank you, Sam. <laughs> Acts 28, you've heard this, you've, you've read this narrative, but there's a twist to this here today. Once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed this unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us because it was rainy and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood as he put it on the fire, a viper, driven out by the what? Driven out by the what? Driven out by the what? Be careful what you ask for. Don't ask for a holy ghost and fire if you don't want the vipers in your city to come out. Wherever there is fuego, snakes and vipers will be exposed. Are you hearing me? Driven out by the? It attached itself on its hand, and Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effect. An anointing born out of adversity changes the world. Here's the message. Here's the subtext. Come hell or high water, I'm on my way to Rome. You'll get that in a second. Before you're seated, tell the person that you really, really want to tell them that, like an bien, tell your neighbor, come hell or high water, I'm on my way to Rome. Tell your other neighbor, come hell or high water, I'm on my way to Rome. You'll get that in the next five minutes. You may be seated. You may be seated. If you're taking any notes, and good luck with that. 
You and your house are anointed for Rome. You'll get that in a second. Not the Rome Vatican Pope. You'll get that in what it means in a second. You and your house are anointed for Rome, which means greater things. Your destiny is not based on what's in front of you. Your destiny is based on who's inside of you. Mm. Acts 27, go back one chapter. Before we get to Malta, we have the Apostle Paul. He arrives in Malta. He's been through a shipwreck. You know the story. He's drenched. All of a sudden, out of that fire pit comes a snake, grabs a hold of his hand. He shakes it off. Before we get to that, we have to digress a bit. Paul was on his way to Rome, Acts 27, 1. When it was decided it would sail for Italy for Rome, Paul and some other prisoners were handed over to a centurion named Julius who belonged to the imperial regiment. Somebody shout Rome. Rome. Paul was on his way to Rome. Why Rome? Paul was on his way to Rome not for a mani petty, not for a recital, not for the annual gathering of the Road to Damascus Association. He was on his way to Rome because four chapters prior, God gave Paul his biggest assignment. Acts 23, 11. That night, the Lord appeared to Paul and said, Be encouraged, Paul, as you have been a witness to me here in Jerusalem. You must preach the good news in Rome as well. You'll get this. Paul was on his way to Rome to preach the good news on the biggest stage of the ancient world. Paul was on his way to Rome to change the world with the preaching of the gospel of Jesus. Dominion, just like Paul, prophetically speaking, we are on our way to Rome. I need you to get ready. And I, I, I just, I'm going to expedite this thing. We're going to be very brief here. But I need you to get ready. I don't care what the detractors say, what the naysayers proclaim, what you read in the recent survey, what the scholars have projected. You may disagree with me. I mean, no importa nada. We are about to see the gospel of Jesus reach more people than ever before in human history. I'm going to repeat that one more time. We are about to see the gospel of the risen Savior reach every nation, every ethnicity, every generation, every demographic without exception. If you believe it, shout, I'm on my way to Rome. We are about to see more people get saved. Three of you believe it. You can't stop God's plans. Are we streaming? You can't stop God's plans. No, God is up to something. No, 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 God is up to something. No, it's not like, no, look. All right, all right, 2023, how did this year start? Let me show you, just, uh, just let me lay it out. Show you the evidence. God is up to something. What about the year began to an NFL football player dying live on national television. He dies, two teams go, well, let's start praying. And what happens, he comes back to what? He himself, in the interview, said, God brought me back to life. Yeah. No, 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 no. The next day on ESPN, a broadcaster is right there looking at the camera, and he starts talking about what happened the night prior, and he looks around and says, can you believe it? Yeah, he was dead. Yeah, and both teams prayed, and yeah, they prayed, and he came back to life. They prayed, and he came back to life. He's live on ESPN. They prayed, and he came back. He goes, and then he goes like this. All of a sudden, the Holy Ghost fills the studio, and he goes, I think we should pray. <laughs> Go ahead, Google it. Google it. All of a sudden, they start praying. You know what words come out of his mouth? We serve the God who heals. We serve the God who has... Immediately after that, the same identical demographic, the same demographic that two major surveys six months prior described as the most non-Christian, unreachable demographic, same group, two surveys said, this is the most non-Christian demographic in world history, primarily in American history. This demographic, it looks like it's beyond reach. To the same demographic, Generation Z. Supposedly the most non-Christian, unreachable demographic. It seems that God never got the memo. And in a place called Asbury, Kentucky. 
Y'all missed it. Ask Barry, Kentucky. God says, tell me again, which demographic will not worship me? Which demographic will not serve me? Which... And God said, watch me show up. Ha ha. Immediately after that, a guy named a friend of mine, Greg Glory, a pastor from SoCal, he, he releases a movie called The Jesus Revolution. It was supposed to have made $7 million in box office receipts. Over $50 million later, and it's a thing. People are still getting baptized in the Pacific Ocean in Orange County. And then last week in Amsterdam, in Europe, over 6,000 pastors gathered from all over the world. Pastors, leaders, and scholars to make one agreement in light of everything that's happening. You want to hear why we gathered? We didn't gather to sing Kumbaya. We didn't gather. We gathered for this to prophetically declare that by 2033, everyone will hear the gospel of Jesus. Oh, y'all don't believe that. We are about to see more people get saved than ever before. If you believe it, shout like you're on your way to Rome. Shake your name and tell them, I'm on my way to Rome. 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 If you believe that, raise your right hand. It's going to be different here tonight. I'm just going to just go flow prophet. If you really believe it, lift up both hands. If you believe it, repeat after me. Hmm. In Jesus' name. In the next 12 months. More people will come to Jesus as Lord and Savior through my testimony, my ministry, my mantle of anointing that in the previous 12 years combined somebody should break out in a praise right about now somebody should be worshiping right about now somebody should be rejoicing right about I'm on my way to Muslim nations will hear the gospel. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. I said Muslim nations will hear the gospel. Communist nations will hear the gospel. Woke nations will hear the gospel. Millennials will hear the gospel. Generation Z will hear the gospel. Alpha will hear the gospel. Black and white, Republican, Democrat, gay and straight, AARP, LGBTQ, they will all... Somebody shout them on my way to Rome. If you really believe we're about to see more people come to Jesus, I want you to praise like you believe it and shout like you believe it. You believe it, pray like you believe it, worship like you believe it, sing like you believe it, preach like you believe it, serve like you believe it, think like you believe it, live like you believe it, give like you believe it. Repeat after me, come hell or high water. I'm on my way to Rome. The biggest harvest, the, big, the greatest harvest, we're about to see more people come to Jesus. That's not, is that wishful thinking? No. You know what Jesus said? You know what he said? When all the ethnic groups, all the nations, Hear this, then the end will come. We're about to see more people get saved. I need you, please, this is called holy harassment. Tell your neighbor, make room. Tell him, make room. Tell him, make room. 
No joke, make room. Dear Pastor Miles Rutherford, be because you dare to stand up for biblical truth, God's about to give you an entire city, an entire region. I need somebody here to praise. I'm on my way to rock. Hey, I feel an anointing. I feel an anointing. I feel an anointing. I feel an anointing. We're on our way to rock. We got to finish. I told you it was going to be real, real quick today. We Real quick, real quick. You and your house are anointed for Rome for greater things. For the gospel explosion in you, with you, for you, and through you. Number two, you and your house are anointed for the storm. Let me explain what that means. The storm does not define you. The storm reveals who you really are. I'll repeat that for the hearing impaired. The storm does not define you. Get over yourself. The storm reveals who you really are. Acts 27, they were on their way to Rome. You know the story. Paul's on his way to Rome. And he wasn't, it was in a Norwegian cruise line, Royal Caribbean, Carnival, Celebrity X, whatever it may be. He was on his way to Rome on a prison ship. On a prison ship. All of a sudden, a storm comes up on Nor'easter and they get battled around like a cheap piñata. Oh, that's slightly racist. You know what I mean. I, 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 I just, you know what I mean. And he gets battered, battered around. Let me, let, me, let me give you this. Everybody here is driven. We're all driven. Repeat after me. We are all driven. You're either driven by your past or your future. By the pathetic or the prophetic. By problems or promises. By nightmares or dreams. By the flesh or the spirit. By Google searches or godly searches. You're either driven by drama or by destiny. By trauma or by testimony. Some of you are driven by praise. And some of you are driven by criticism. And here's what I know. If their praise did not make you, their criticism cannot break you. The Bible says, read it to your biblical due diligence, verses 15 and 17 and 18. They decided to be driven by the wind. As a result, verse 18, they were battered. Battered because they determined it would be better to be driven by the storm. We have too many believers driven by the winds of wokeism and cancel culture, by ideologies and social constructs that are counterintuitive to the word and the spirit of God. Too many Christians driven by opinions and feelings instead of being driven by truth and love. I'm going to get in trouble now, Pastor Rod. Jeff Carter, get over here, please. Pastor Jeff is one of my pastors. Run over here, run, please. This is PJ. He's our men's pastor. You have no idea. I, this is not scripted. You're here because I want you to bear witness. Integrity is everything. Integrity is more important than influence. Hence, you are here to bear witness to this to make sure I'm not making this up. Recently, as you know, as my pastor, I'm not going to get into the minutia of what in names. I'm just going to tell you what happened. What happened was, <laughs> we get a call about Christmas time. Random call. We preach the message about open doors, and then right after that, we get a call. So we didn't find it to be coincident. We thought it was God. because we got And the call was like this, Pastor Sam. A major ministry in California is suffering great financial angst in the tune of millions. And during COVID, they, they pivoted towards a certain direction. Hence, they lost their people. They lost their money. And it's a major ministry with a lot of acres, three different auditoriums, massive property, one of the top in all the state of California. So we, you're the first call, we're interested, are you interested in coming in? So we, we went like, this could be the prayer we've been, you know, like, wow, like we were praying about it. I mean, Stevie Wonder could see it could be of God, right? I mean, it was, it was that thing, right? So, so we were like, this could be it. So he's part of my board. We went to the meeting. We sit down, first meeting. This is, he bears witness, first meeting, first meeting. Four board members, we have board members here. They have their board members there. I'm seated right here, and I'm going. It's our first meeting. We strategized beforehand. We had some coffee and said, all right, what do we say? What we, what, this is it. This is the answer to prayer. This could be it. This could be it. So we walk in there. All right. First question, not like, you know, what would be your long-term strategy, five-year plan? You know, what's, what, what's your matrix and your rubric? What is it regarding small groups and volunteers and dreams? None of that. First question. Am I right? First question. Boom. Pastor Sam. I go, yes. On behalf of our team, our board, we have one question for you. I go, wow, what is your question? The guy goes, Pastor Sam, 
our church leans left. Where do you lean? Am I making this up? So help me, so many thoughts went through my head. I'm thinking they're going to ask, are you going to have a Spanish service? Are you going to have a Slavic service? No! Our church leans left. Where do you lean? And the Holy Spirit hit me. I'm seated right here. He's next to me over here. I'm here. Holy Spirit hit me and said, go ahead, say it. And I'm fighting with God like if I say I'm going to lose this, which I did. I said, if I say it, I'm not going to get this. If I say it, I'm not going to. And God said, say it. Say it, Sammy. Say it. So reluctantly, I had no choice. I opened up my mouth and said, sir, with great due deference, we don't lean. We stand. We stand. We stand. We stand on the Word of God. We stand on the promises of God. We stand on the finished work of Jesus. As a matter of fact, sir, whatever the Bible calls sin, we call sin. Whatever the Bible calls holiness, we call holiness. And I'm tired of seeing Christians leaning one way or another. We don't need people to lead. We need a church that stands. I need you to tell your neighbor, I don't lead. I stand. I stand. I stand. I stand. Is there anyone standing in the house here? To if you don't lead and you stand, lift up one hand. If, I'm tired of seeing pastors and Oh boy, I'm gonna get in trouble. I'm tired of seeing churches that lean and Christians that lean and believers that lean and artists and preachers that lean. We don't need a church that leans. We need a church that stands. I feel the Lord. First Corinthians 16, 13. Be on the alert. Stand. Stand firm. Oh, please, I'm, I'm, I need you, please, to shake your neighbor and tell him, don't lean, stand. Tell your other neighbor, don't lean, stand. Stand up for biblical truth. Stand up for righteousness and justice. Stand up for our children. I said, stand up for our Stand up for holy sexuality. Stand up for la familia. Stand up for godliness. Stand up for life, for religious liberty, for biblical justice, for racial unity, for the gospel. And by the way, do me a favor, and I'm speaking to myself now. Don't just stand inside the church. Stand up in the school board meeting. Stand up in the voting booth. Stand up in Target. Stand up wherever you go. Is there anybody here willing to stand? Lift up your hands. Jason, come up here. Jason, run up here with the plank, please. Remember Jason from last year. This guy, he stood up for us in Iraq and Afghanistan. So I can stand up here and preach the gospel freely in a nation that is still free. When I was 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I saw a pastor from Columbus, Ohio preach on television who wasn't afraid to stand up. Everyone else was preaching, God bless them, different things. But this man, he would stand up for truth. He would, no matter of the criticism, what would happen, his audacious faith, 
his courage you stood up and because you stood up your spiritual sons and daughters are standing up in this generation somebody shout like your entire church is about to stand up no 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 somebody praise like the days of leaning come to an end right here right now Lift up your hands if you're standing. Lift up your hands. Put on the armor of God. So when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything, stand. 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 Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I don't lean. I stand. Take your neighbor's arm, take your neighbor's arm, lift it up and say, I don't stand alone. Oh, I'm speaking prophetically. We were about to see. We're about to see pastors across America. We're about to see the emergence of pastors across America that will not sacrifice truth on the altar of political expediency. We are about to see pastors across America that will do away with comfortable Christianity, convenient Christianity. We are about to see pastors and leaders, societal architects, cultural reformers that are about to stand up. Not one driven by political correctness, lukewarmness, or apathy, but one driven by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, a church that stands. We're about to see that. We have no choice. We have no choice. No tenemos alternativa, tenemos que levantarnos. Con tus manos levantadas, lift up your hands. We're going to stand. That's not wishful thinking. I come with fear and trembling, telling you enough is enough. How do you lean? Man, we don't lean. We stand. We're done. I told you it's going to be quick. Are there any questions? Well, she's, as you're with me, let me just call you out here for a second. Be, before I, I call you out here for a second, I got to show. This is crazy. They get gathered around, and God speaks to Paul, undergirded with an angel who visits him. One of the craziest prophetic words you can get from heaven. Can you imagine God speaking to you like this? You're in the middle of the sea. You're in a ship with prisoners. You're being slapped around like a, hmm. And here's the word of the Lord. Read it. Crazy word. Like, who gives you this word? And God, God gives them a word undergirded with an angel who just doubles down on it. Here's the word. Hey, Paul. What a word. Paul. You're, you're in a ship, beating battered. And God says, Paul, here's the word. You see that ship? And you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me the word, God, give me the word. That ship is not going to make it. <laughs> Read it. Read it. Like, who gives you that word? You see that ship you're in? Yeah, yeah, the ship. <laughs> it's not going to make it. Oh, Paul, you will. For the next two and a half minutes, I want to preach to people who lost a ship but still made it. Is there anyone here who lost a ship but still made it? Is there anyone here who lost some followers but you kept your faith? You lost connections but you kept your calling. You lost your mind but you never lost your mantle. If you lost... Does anyone here have a testimony of something you lost along the way? You lost something that should have killed you, but here you are. Now I'm going to say that one more time. I said you lost something that should have taken you out, but here you are. I'm going to do that one more time. You lost a ship, but here you are. Somebody prays like you made it. 
Come on, Dominion. Somebody worship like you made it. Somebody rejoice like you made it. When your hands raised, you and your house are anointed to make it even without that ship. There are relationships that didn't make it, but you're still here. Lift up your right hand. There are ideas that didn't make it, but you're still here. There are seasons that didn't make it, but you're still here. Even without that person, even without that income, even without that door, you're still here. Woo! Why are you here, Hebrews 10, 23? He is faithful to keep his promise. Isaiah 43, 13, from eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can snatch away anything from my hand. I said no one can snatch anything away from my hand. No one can undo what I've already done. Philippians 3, 8, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus as my Lord. With your right hand, repeat after me. I lost the ship, but I still have the anointing. I lost a ship, but I still have my calling. I lost a ship, but I still have my praise. I said, I still have my praise. I said, I still have my praise. I, I still have my shout. I still have my worship. I still have my joy. I still have my peace. I have Jesus. I have everything I need to make it. All right, stand with me. You are standing. Stand with me. You are. You're on your way to Rome. You're on your way to the most important facilitative platform for the dissemination of the gospel of Jesus. We're about to see more people saved, more people delivered, more people healed, more people filled with the Holy Spirit than ever before in our lives and in our history. And through your testimony, through your ministry, through your mantle, through your calling, if you really believe that, lift up your hand. You're anointed for Rome. You're anointed to survive the storm and even thrive out of the storm. You're anointed to make it even without that ship. Oh, there was an addition, an addendum to the word. Read it. Hear Paul. Here's the word of the Lord. You're going to lose the ship. You're going to make it. Oh, by the way, Paul. One more thing. Everyone in your ship will make it too. <sighs> Y'all didn't even get that. You don't need to worry about your children or your children's children or your children's 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 children or your children's 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 children. Everyone in your ship. Somebody pray like you actually believe that everyone in your ship will make it. If you really believe that, lift up your hand. If you really believe Acts 16, 31, lift up both hands. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your will be. If you really want to double down on Joshua 24, 15 and say, as for me and my house, we shall serve. I dare you to look at your neighbor and tell them, let not your heart be troubled. Everyone, not some of them, not the majority of them, put a smile on your face and a praise on your lips. Everyone in your ship will make it. How many believe that? Everyone in your ship will make it. Lift up your hands. Everyone in your ship will make it. Everyone in your ship will make it. Oh.
Every one of your ship will make it. You are anointed to discover that God does great things with broken pieces. You have that? The ship fell apart. Verse 44. Some of them swam to the shoreline. The rest were to get there on planks or other pieces of the ship. God does great things with broken pieces. How many here know firsthand that God does great things with broken pieces? Is there anybody in dominion who can bear witness that a broken praise is still a praise? That a wounded worshiper is still a worshiper? And that a prodigal son is still a son? Somebody shout like you know that God does great things with broken The purpose of God is greater than the brokenness of man. The purpose of God is greater than the brokenness of man. If it's broken, God can fix it. If it's empty, God can fill it. If it failed, God can restore it. If it's sin, God can forgive it. If it's wrong, God can make it right. If it's crooked, God can make it straight. If it fell, God can pick it up. If it's paralyzed, God can make it move. And if it died, I said if it died, I said if it died, we serve the God that has resurrection power. Lift up your hands, let's just, hey, hey. Woo. Nothing is impossible with God, Luke 137. He does great things with broken pieces, 2 like Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. Oh, he does great things. Learn to worship with your wounds, praise with your problems, move with your mess, sing through the sorrow and dance in the drought because God does great things with broken pieces. So he gets to the shoreline. They get there. He's drenched. And here's the end of the story. He gets there after all of this storm, all this adversity. And all of a sudden, Viper comes out, driven by the heat. Can you lift up your hands? I'm going to speak prophetically now. In your respective cities, you are about to see. Someone asked recently, why are we seeing more manifestations, more diabolically, demonically induced ideology, social constructs, and behavior than ever before? Than e why? Because the heat is increasing. No, 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 you're not hearing me. You're going to hear me in a second. I need you to get ready. I need Dominion to get ready in your city, in your community. You're about to see more vipers and more snakes come out that have been hiding than ever before. But praise be to God, I'm prophesying now. The viper will not strangle your destiny or poison your dream. You and your house are about to shake off that viper and it will be consumed in the very fire that provoked it to come out in the first place. If you believe it, shout like you actually believe. Oh, I feel the Lord, you're about to see vipers and snakes are about to be cast out. Everybody go like this. Grab a hold of a viper, a snake, an ideology, a teaching, something right now influencing your community. Out of alignment of the word and the will of God. Grab a hold of it right now. Here it is. We grabbed a hold of Paul's hands and I'm going to tell you what he did not do. He did not panic, talk to it, or embrace a cynical view of the world. We are what we tolerate. He did not take the viper and say, let's go to therapy for a while. <laughs> Nothing wrong with therapy, especially Christian therapy, actually pretty wonderful. But it wasn't that moment. He grabbed it. Mm. The viper grabbed a hold of Paul's hand. Y'all need to 
What did Paul just survive? No. If Paul would have come out of a massage to encounter a viper, it may have been a different response. The man just survived a shipwreck. The man just survived a nor'easter. In other words, are you kidding me? If what I just went through did not kill me, there is an anointing that is born out of adversity that empowers you to shake off everything hell sends your way. Somebody shout like you know you're about to shake it off. Look at your neighbor, tell him, shake it off. 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 Go ahead. Go like this. I'm not who I used to be. You have an anointing born out of adversity that empowers you to shake off everything hell sends your way. Grab it. Luke 10, 19. I have given you authority to walk over all snakes and scorpions. You will be able to destroy all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. What you went through, whoo if what you went through did not stop you, nothing will. Grab it. As you grab it by sense and anointing, somebody needs to grab a hold of this. You're about to go back home after dominion with the greatest anointing of your life. All these days of impartation, all the words you receive, you're about to reap the greatest harvest. The greatest harvest. The greatest harvest thus far. <laughs> and everything the enemy sent your way, grab it right now. <laughs> grab it, whatever it may be. The snakes in your mind and in your heart and in your family and in your home. Those in your community, those attacking your children. Ooh. If you survive the storm, if you survive adversity, grab a hold of it right now. And if you have a, a sense of breakthrough coming in the next one minute and 38 seconds, I need you to tell your neighbor, neighbor, it's too late now. It's too late now. What I've been through, what I survived, produced an anointing that empowers me to shake off everything hell sends my way. Anybody here ready to shake it off? Anybody in Dominion ready to shake it all? Let's do it. That's how we conclude. Grab it. Now, no joke. No hype. If a garden snake attacked you recently, stay where you're at and just shake it off from your seat. But if you say, Pastor Sam, some things have come out of the woodworks recently that have come out against like I've never seen before. If that's you, so if it's a ginormous viper, not a little worm, not a garden snake, if that's you, what did the snake, the viper, grab a hold of? His ankle. What was it? His what? His hand. Read the same chapter. The Mac Daddy Mac of Malta. His daddy is sick and dying. Paul comes around and does what? He sneezes over him. Places his feet on him. No, he does what? The same area that the enemy has been attacking in your life will be the same identical area that God's about to magnify for his glory. I'm preaching to five people right now. The same area that's been under attack will be the same out there under the greatest anointing. If that's you, 
If you have a viper, come out of your seat. Join me right now. Go, run, 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 run. Get ready to shake it off. 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 I sense a breakthrough anointing right here. I sense a breakthrough anointing right here. Here we go. It could be in your family, in your home, in your marriage, in your ministry, in your calling, in your health, in your finances, in your children, in your loved ones. All right, grab a hold of it. Don't let the enemy grab a hold of your mind, your thoughts, your dreams. You're going to shake it off. Don't analyze it. Don't tolerate it. Don't negotiate with it. Here's a word for someone. Here's a word. The things that once poisoned and strangled your dream, your faith, your integrity and destiny will never be able to harm you again. God has given you an anointing to overcome the enemy. Let me prophesy. We, grab a hold. Your prayer will stop him. Your praise will confuse him. I said your praise will confuse him. I said your praise will confuse him. 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 Your peace, your peace, your, your peace will paralyze him. Your integrity will disarm him. And your resistance will make him flee. 2 Thessalonians 3.3 3, He is faithful to protect you from all harm and all evil. Are you ready to shake it off? Grab a hold of it. If it's under attack, God is about to use it. Like never before. If you're ready to shake it off, grab a hold of it. We're streaming, right, Pastor? Hey, Taylor Swift, this may be your song, but it's our anointing. Ready? Get ready to shake off personal vipers. Shake off rejection. Shake off closed doors. Shake off illness, sickness, negativity. Apathy, unbelief, unforgiveness. A spirit of entitlement, corruption. Perpetual victimization. Easily offended behavior. At the count of three. Where are my pastors at? Todos los pastores. Pastors, this is for you personally, but it's for your city. No, no, no. You're about to shake off every lie of the enemy that has strangled the purpose of your city. No, you, you are about to shake off every viper that has held your city, that's poisoned your city with crime and violence, hedonism, perversion, destruction, pain. Are you ready at the count of three? At the count of three, tell your neighbor, give me some room. One. Oh, Chicago, get ready, Chicago. Chicago, that viper of violence will come down in the name of Jesus. You grab it? One. By the way, when you cast it out, don't chuck it to your neighbor. 
throw it in the fire. Don't leave the viper. Don't let the viper be around for the next generation. Let it be consumed in your fire. One, two, and when you cast it out, I want you to give God the best praise you've given him this entire dominion. One, two, three. Lift up your hand. If you did look at your neighbor, tell them no more snakes, no more vipers. In my life, my family, my church, my community, my city, me and my house, we just shook them all off in the name of Jesus. We just shook them all off in the name of Jesus. We just shook them all off in the name of Jesus. Up your hands. I sense the Lord. I sense the Lord. With your hands lifted high, I'm gonna. Your city. Right there where you're at, right there where you're at. This is a little bit unorthodox. I'm gonna pivot here in a second and you give it to our pastor. But I, when I say now, call out the name of your city and, and just say snake free one two three now do it now you have no idea what what you just activated you have no idea what atmosphere you just shifted in your city you just you have no idea the devils that just came down were defeated were cast out by what you just declared If you have an anointing that was born out of adversity that empowers you to change your world, lift up one hand. If come hell or high water, you are on your way to Rome. You're about to see more people get saved. More people are about to come to Jesus than ever before in your lifetime. Lift up both hands. With your hands raised. Real quick as we transition here for one moment.
can you keyboard us? Pastor Chris, where are you? Are you raptured? There you are. You are worthy of it all. Just say that right now. Just play it and sing it one or two times, and then I'm going to call them out. Go ahead, sing it. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Sing it like you believe it. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. When your hands raised, you have that anointing. You are worthy of it all. Say it like you believe it. You are worthy of it all. For from you, for from you, to you are all things. You deserve, you deserve the glory. Lifted up dominion. You are worthy of it all. So worthy for from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are, you are worthy of it all. You and you and all our God. Oh. You are worthy of it all. Oh. Hands raise our sense of anointing here. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Somebody say it now. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. You are you have that anointing born out of adversity if you will get to Rome that serves as a biblical metaphor for a facilitative platform for an unbridled unprecedented harvest the preaching the delivery of the good news to a broken world if you believe more people are going to come to Jesus through your testimony your calling your mantle of anointing than ever before lift them up really high if you believe your family will be a conduit for the good news of Jesus. So winning, so winning, so winning. This is the word God gave me. If you've been here any of the last past six years, you probably know how we're going to wrap up. As the last speaker of Dominion, I am compelled contractually with heaven to do this. So all I want you to do, even if it makes you uncomfortable, if you physically cannot do it, Please, stay right there where you're at. You're fine. But if you can't, squat. Squat. And when I say three, I want you to launch like a rocket. Because whatever held you back will no longer be able to stand in your way. That's right. 
Are you ready? One, and give God the best praise. Two, not a viper, not a snake, just like Paul. You're about to surprise your world. Ready? Here we go. The Midian, ready or not, here we come. One, two, three. casa I know pastor Rod's heart for evangelism I know his heart for evangelism I know his heart for souls he had no idea what I was gonna preach so I walked in I just flew in from another conference and all these different things with the movies and so forth. And I came in a little bit physically exhausted. I walked in there and my spirit just jumped up because he started talking to me about the points of my sermon about even knowing. He never read the notes, never read the notes. And he looked at me and said, Sammy, it's about the souls. And I went, you read off my sermon? Like, what are you doing? I want you to hear me. Real quick, we're not going to, no bureaucracy, no, no, this is it. I mean, this is it. Right there where you're at. You have your iPhone? Take out your iPhones. If you have Androids, repent and get an iPhone. No, I'm kidding, but really repent. Just get your phones. Get your iPhone out. Take it out. Media team, quickly, put the QR code right now. Quickly. No, we're going we're gonna to do this differently. No, not that. Put that away. Put it away. Put that away. No, no, no. The QR code for giving. For giving. I know Pastor Rod Parsley's heart for souls. I'm part of the City Harvest Network because we are fully committed to seeing what we just preached about come to fruition. We're about to see more people in America come to Jesus as Lord and Savior than ever before. More people in Europe. Europe is about, hey Europe, Europe is about to reap the greatest harvest in the history of Europe. Asia. And I mean Asia, including China, Asia, India, the Middle Eastern nations, Africa, Latin America. We're about to see more people get saved in our report. That's where my giving is going into right now. This commitment to that harvest. You see that right there? Take your iPhones out. Do we have a QR code, Pastor Ashley? Do we have a way they can give on their phone? Text to give? Do that right now. No, no, but I just don't want you to give like that. This is prophetic. Once you give, I want you to sow a seed into the word that was just unleashed. This is not coming to me. This is coming for the reaping of souls. Here's what I want you to do. I want you right now, after you give, to somehow get up here. I don't know, I don't care how many thousands of you are here. You're going to break through the crowd like the woman of the issue of blood. You're going to hit the stage and you're going to say, I'm on my way to Rome. I'm on my way to Rome. Come hell or high water, I'm on my way to Rome. So once you have your giving, if you have an envelope, you have an envelope, get that envelope, give it now. If you have old school cash, old school cash, right now, find your seed, find your gift. Find your affirmation of this word. Once you have it, lift up your hand. Because I'm going to release you to run up here and say, come hell or high water, I'm on my way to Rome. Are you ready? Lift them up. Don't hesitate. Not under this anointing, not with this breakthrough, not with this commitment to seeing the world reached with the gospel of Christ. Christ, the only way. Once you have it, lift it up. If you don't have it, take it from your neighbor and quickly find out if any vipers are left in their garden. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Unprecedented harvest in each respective city, in every suburb and city, in every nation, in this place and those streaming, connected to this mantle of anointing. You have it? Heavenly Father, seal this word with this affirmation, with this seed. Look up here for a second with your seat. Lift it up. I'm going to get in trouble. 
stop for one second, lower the music. Don't stop and lower the music. He had knows nothing. Jason can bear witness, so can Pastor Jeff. I came to my church a few months ago and I said, when we give as a church and when we respond, it's usually regarding your blessing and your breakthrough. The Bible talks about my blessing and my breakthrough, but if all we do is me and me and me, that's called narcissism. That's called narcissistic Christianity of self-serving. The number one thing that should compel us to give should be the fact that through my giving, people will be saved, delivered, and healed of the power of Jesus. If you come in agreement with that, everything else is secondary. We receive it and we believe it, but it's that above all things. If you really believe that we're on our way to Rome, run out from wherever you're at, even if you gave with your phone, hit the stage and say, come hell or high water, I'm on my way to Rome. Come up, quickly, run up, run up, get, go. Breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. Breakthrough, breakthrough, go ahead. Come hell or high water. I'm on my way to Rome, Brian. There it is. Come on, Brian. God's giving you a harvest, Brian. It can't be stopped, my friend. Go! I'm on my way to Rome. Come on. You are worthy. Oh. You are worthy. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are worthy. You are Say it. Come hell or high water. I'm on my way to Rome. Hey. Come on. Come on. I'm on my way to Rome. I'm on my way to Rome. Hey, you deserve. Make room, make room, make room, make room, make room. Come hell or high water. For me in my house. I'm on my way to Rome. I'm on my way to Rome. Hey! For from you. For from you. Quick book, rapid, real quick, Pastor Rod. That, by the way, everybody who goes on Amazon right now and purchases that book, God already made it into a bestseller. It's a, it's a, so it's, we were on Fox News, you maybe saw the interview. So God really blew it up. That's his doing, not mine. So if you buy that book on Amazon right now, tonight, in the back booth table, I'm not selling any books. I'm going to give you another book I wrote, Power for Your Day, completely free. Even if we run out of books, it's not even a first come, first serve. The, the office will take your name. And my office will ship on Wednesday a copy of Power for Your Day. So purchase that book on Amazon now and get your free book in the back. Come up here real quick. Did you see, you saw Flaming Hot? Okay. I produced a film, another film called Flaming Hot. During COVID, we lost our platforms. It was supposed to come out in theaters. So I'm, I'm discombobulated. Talked to my wife and went like, what is God telling me? Because I knew God said, Sammy, you're going to make that man's life into a, into a movie. And God never lies. So I went, why aren't we COVID hit? Crazy. No theaters. I went, what's going to happen now? Watch this. A certain platform gave us a call to put on a movie about faith in God where Christ is mentioned as the God they prayed to and gave them the breakthrough. One platform. Actually, on two. But a certain platform that we are streaming. It's a platform you would never expect to accommodate a film about faith and family. 
We aired, we streamed this on the 9th of June. Do your Google due diligence. Variety Magazine, we broke records. Three days of streaming, the most streamed film in three days of streaming. And now it's been nominated by Variety Magazine as one of the top 10 films of the year. The platform that we are streaming on, a film about faith and family, is called Disney. Somebody say, look what the Lord has done. So I encourage you to see the film Flaming Hot. It will inspire you. I honor you. You are mi hermana. You are my sister. I love you. You've changed my life changed my life you're gonna see the greatest harvest ever do you know that no no for reals you've seen a lot man you're about to see the greatest harvest yet the greatest harvest yet hey dominion that's my pastor spiritual dad that's my sister let's do one thing together in jesus name let's go change the world god bless you and god keep you